brought it about the, the heat burning coals in, on the head and what that means. So where we looked at it was in Romans, but it's originally from uh, Proverbs chapter 25. There we go. Proverbs chapter 25, verses 21 through 22, and it says this. Um, like one who takes off a garment garment on a cold, this can't be right. I guess it's 21 through, oh, I, I started in 20. There's my problem. If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat, and if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. Now, there is no explanation when we look at history to what Solomon is referring to, to heat burning coals. That's not really a thing um, in the ancient world. So we're left with this question of, well, what does he mean to heat burning coals? So then we just have to kind of look at the idea of what he's saying. And obviously to heap a burning coal on somebody, that would make them uncomfortable, which seems to be implying that he's talking about bothering their conscience. But then when Paul quotes in Romans 12.20, um, he seems to be referring to that they will receive a greater condemnation. In other words, their punishment will be greater the nicer you are to them, which sounds pretty intense. Yeah. <laughs> if you if, listen to what Paul says here, and, and you can kind of see for yourself, never take your own revenge, beloved, but let leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him, and if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So what he sounds like he's saying is, you guys keep on doing the right, and then, in the end, at the final judgment, they will be judged all the harsher. It sounds like that's what he's saying. If that is what he's saying, <laughs> he just made that way more intense than Solomon uh, said it in Proverbs. Um, there is a an idea about it, the Egyptians carrying the burning coals to show repentance. Um, there isn't a whole lot of proof for that. There is one obscure late dated text that may be referring to this, but it's unclear what it's actually talking about. It could hypothetically be talking about this, though. So we're left with that. Um, it's not really clear, so it's hard to establish a firm doctrine on such an obscure text. Um, next, uh, there's another idea that giving your neighbor burning coals for their fire. You know, they would carry the burning coals in a basket that they put on their head to feed their own fire. In other words, you were you'd be helping them and you know just being a nice person. And well, okay, but that's very wasteful. Um, the, these people wouldn't have wasted their 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 fuel for their fire like that. Um, they would have given them maybe some unburnt coal, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's just not really how how it would have gone like that. Um, also, given the text, it doesn't seem likely that that's what Paul is referring to because it just doesn't really fit with his flow of argument. Um, what's most likely is, is this. Do what's right and leave the rest to God. You can't convince someone to repent. We, all that you can do is you can do what's right, and God will do what he does. He, he will bring justice to the situation, and the person will do what they're doing. They're, they're going to keep betraying you. But still, you do the right thing. That's why he ends it with, don't overcome, become overcome by evil, but overcome that evil with good. So, uh, all things considered, uh, the most likely option seems to be that he's talking about uh, uh, that they will receive a greater punishment. Uh, does that kind of make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do, any any questions on that? Because I know last week we kind of spent a, spent a little bit of time on it. Everybody good? No? Maybe so. You guys are awful quiet. What do you guys think? Really quiet, you guys. <laughs> I specifically looked for ancient references to um, carrying burning coals on your head, and I I didn't find anything except for that one really obscure uh, Egyptian text. I mean, you guys are the ones who brought this question up. Like, what? Do you, are you guys good on this? Not good on this? I still have questions. I'm good. I'm I kind good. of see it as killing them with kindness. Yeah. Have you heard that song? Um, yeah, by what? Uh, uh, Justin Bieber's old girlfriend. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That song is intense. Like, <laughs> he 
she's like, kill them with kindness. Kill them with kindness. Like, oh my gosh, oh, wow. Selena, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> like, she took it way too deep. Huh? Uh, anyways, so tonight we're talking about racism. Now, in a lot of racism, there's um, there's kind of the idea of um, conspiracy theories. And, and, and we'll kind of go back to that. Okay, so... Um, but first, I just want to I want to ask you this this question that is oftentimes used in racist arguments. If history is written by the victors, in other words, there's two people fighting. Uh -huh. The person who loses, they don't get to write what happened. It's the one who won that wrote what happened. Right? right. right? Isn't that what America did with the Native Americans? Yes. Yeah. We completely screwed them over, and then oh no, we're the good guys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Manifest destiny and all that nonsense. Yeah. Um, so how can we know if something is really accurate? How can we know that the history that we've been told is true if history know. is written by the victors? You don't know. How do we know that Germany was wrong? How do we know that a lot of that stuff wasn't made up? Yeah. See what I mean? Like, how do we know these things? <laughs> Basically, we just have to uh, go to that the, no, the other side and look for... Uh, to get the whole picture. Okay. So do more in-depth research on your yes. own. Okay. So you're you're saying you really can't trust history. You have to no, do it yourself. you got to do it on your own. Okay. All right. But then on the other side of that, you really can't trust what the other person says either. Because a hundred different people could see it a hundred different ways. <laughs> and that is a lot of the problem with history is because modern historians have to sift through these two opposing oh, arguments and say what was more probable. Well, you know. what, what's, you know, what takes <coughs> uh, Yeah, they have to go through every bit of... Well, like, for instance, the Great Flood, uh -huh. the Flood of Noah, right? <coughs> Almost every culture has an account of a Great Flood happening. Right. Native American cultures do, yeah. um, you uh, know, obviously Jewish... Uh, uh, Babylonian cultures do. I mean, just all these different cultures all say that there was a great flood. Yeah. The, the 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 specifics vary, right. but the but main like, the main story is the mean, same. Yeah. Um, for instance, in one of the stories, I believe it was a Native American. Um, he turned into a fish or something. I forget how. One of them uh, doesn't ever resolve the issue about where did his wife come from. Like, how yeah. did he repopulate? Right. Um, I forget which one that is. It might have been the Babylonian one. I, I don't remember. Um, anyways. Um, and modern people will say, no, there was no Great Flood, but yet all these different cultures talk well, about it happening, about it. so it's like, if, a if, good example. Well, if all different cultures from, you know, around are, you know, talking to this one thing, then it has to be some fact. Hmm. That's just how I... Doing a cross-comparison. Cross yeah. comparison. Okay. Did you guys have anything to add? Or, Nicole, did you have anything to say? How, if history is written by the pictures, how can we know if something's really accurate? Well, I think some stuff you just kind of have to go with, you know? What do you mean? Like... The stuff we don't have other sides to. Like some ancient history, we don't have the other sides to it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like the Egyptians, for instance, if they didn't like something that, that happened, they just rewrote history. Yeah. And, and yeah. then if a pharaoh came up, right. or if, if one pharaoh came up and like uh, there was a lot of like flood, uh, uh, floods and disaster that happened in his reign, they would just assume that he was a bad person right. and, and that the gods were angry with him. Mm -hmm. So they would just remove him from history. <laughs> And yeah. the next pharaoh would make himself look like the good person. Because remember, the pharaoh was God, so he right. had to keep that continuity going. Yeah. He was a usurper. <laughs> Go right. ahead. So a lot of a lot of history like that, we don't we don't have other records of it except for like maybe here or there. So it, some of it we just have to take with that's fact, or maybe with a grain of salt if we don't want to try to believe it, or uh -huh. you know, it's just kind of. And see, that's a lot of the problem because, um, like, there's some Greek stories that may or may not have happened, but then there's some things that we have no account of something happening, but then we find remains, yeah. archaeology. Mm -hmm. And then there's some things where they talk about and we're just not quite sure. Right. Like, for instance, uh, the Iliad. Mm -hmm. 
where you know these different Greek alliances go against this the, the city of Troy because uh -huh. there was this whole adultery situation right. going on. How much of that was true? Yeah. And then there's some stuff that was made into legends, and all you know is the legend tell, yeah. and you don't know like the actual fact of what happened. It. That's exactly what I was about like, to say. There, there's a person called Gilgamesh. Yeah. The Epic of Gilgamesh. Okay. Yeah. Um, he probably was a ruler at one time in Mesopotamia. However, all all we know is the Epic of Gilgamesh, where he goes and fights the gods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, he probably didn't really do that, did he? <laughs> right. And then if you look through, like, history books, there's a lot of, like, gaps. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, this happened, and then 100 years later, this happened. It's like, yeah. okay, well, what happened well, in that 100 happened? years? And then some of them will go, and they won't even record history. They'll just say, well, science shows us that this yeah. happened. Okay, but that's not history. No. History is a written record or okay. some other record of, of, of things. It's not scientists telling us about evolution. Yeah. Technically speaking, evolution is not history because yeah. there is no written record of, to, of, of that. Yeah. <laughs> the monkey, half monkey, retarded fish frog people, they didn't have, <laughs> they didn't have, you know, these these right. things to write down. So you, they can't validate their existence. So uh -huh. that's kind of outside of the realm of realm of history but then it hops down millions and millions of years in the matter of a few pages to oh the first you know caveman or whatever and it's right. like well that was a big yeah. big stretch well, there they mix <laughs> up things it's like well this happened first and then this but it's like that's not yeah. possible uh, that that happened first <laughs> yeah well you guys are kind of being quiet we're having a good time over here join us <laughs> okay. i was never into history so it really didn't matter oh, oh. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Not being in history. Oh. Oh. That's how I look at it. Oh, oh Diana I'm, just came I'm off my favorite people list. <laughs> just Who cares what happened yesterday? It was, it's past. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I've seen a lot of people arguing about that too. It's like, well, it's past. Why do we need to know? It's like, so it doesn't happen again. Mm -hmm. right. What were you going to say? Oh, that's what I was going to say was I think what it comes down to is we need to look to see what happened in the past. And not repeat it. Learn from the different mistakes. See, you know what they've written down and learn from it. Hmm. Okay. But then the question would be, how do we know if what was written wasn't just made up, and the other people actually something well, maybe, completely different happened? Well, maybe just research, research the facts. From well, see that that's where the conspiracy part comes in. Uh, like, for instance, um, Adolf Hitler was a good guy, and um, we all just got together to make him out to be the bad guy. Right. Well, so then – well, what about all these sources that say he was a bad guy? Yeah. Well, there's this – there's these conspiracies going on, you know, where everybody's because of – for whatever reason, uh -huh. you know. Um, in the case of an Ar Aryan, for instance, they would say, okay, well, uh, they're just trying to degrade the, the Aryan race. You know? Right. Well, yeah. this is, now see, this might seem like a stupid question to a lot of us, but you have to realize a lot of these people, this is something that genuinely bothers them. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. So, what do you guys think? Do you find this argument somewhat irrational? Sometimes. You know, it just seems like it's a never-ending loop of back and forth yeah, yeah i feel like that too sometimes yeah. <laughs> i'm so glad we could see eye to eye on this act <laughs> it just seems it's pointless that they would be arguing over something like that when there's more important things that they could be doing rather than sitting around arguing on whether it's actually true or not okay so all things considered um it's important to notice that there are always some kind of trails left. Right. We have a lot of Jews, for instance, who personally attested to the trauma that they went through. Uh -huh. It's hard to discredit that. Right. <laughs> right. Um, we also have um, the outcome of the war itself. A lot of things happened that wouldn't have made sense had there not actually been terrible things happening. Right. Like, there's just a lot of things that just wouldn't really fit. And some of the death camps are still standing. 
Right. So, Absolutely. I mean, there's there's right. evidence there's of that no, happening. Yeah. Um, so there are always trails left, and even if one side is biased, a bias doesn't mean that it's not true. The Gospels are biased. They were trying to show that Jesus was God. Uh -huh. They had a very strong bias. Right. Does that mean not historical? Well, no, of course it's historical. Uh -huh. But writing, they were writing with the bias. And so you have to see a lot of people will write with the bias, and sometimes that bias is so strong that you have to kind of take it, take it with a grain of salt or measure it with something else, but it's right. still there. Right. Okay, so what is racism? I know... Modern days, everybody gets called the racist. I mean, everybody's a racist. Um, just to let you know, guys, uh, a Caucasian, have you ever seen that on a, on a form to fill out? What is a Caucasian, people say? Right? <laughs> there is a mountain range called the Caucasus Mountains. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, and Caucasians, the whiter people, are were said to have come from these mountain ranges. And so that's why they're called Caucasians. However, it's kind of an inaccurate uh, definition because your skin color doesn't make your ethnicity. So kind of inaccurate to just group them all together as Caucasian. But, you know, whatever. It's fine. It's fine. I let that one – never, never, it's, it's not really that big of a deal. Uh, deal. Um, and also – well, I'll come to that in a second. Uh, so – a dictionary definition of what is racism says this. A person who shows or feels discrimination or prejudice against people of other races, okay? Or who believes that a particular race is superior to another. That's from Oxford Dictionary, okay? Or from the Oxford Dictionary, use technically, but... Um, so a person who shows, this is acts, or feels, this is motivation of the heart, discrimination or prejudice against people of other races or who believe that a particular race is superior to another for instance white supremacy right right okay so um just just some some examples here um she's a mexican now for some reason the term mexican has become kind of a a, a bad term but it's really if the person is mexican from mexico you know, that would make them a Mexican, like you're an American if you're from America. You know, it's it's yeah. it's it's not a racist term in and of right. itself. If the person isn't from Mexico, then it would be racist. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because <laughs> well, not necessarily racist as let's 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 put a pin in that. Um, it would be like calling a Japanese person Chinese. Yeah. It would be offensive, absolutely. Uh -huh. Um an honest mistake maybe for some people, right. but still not necessarily a great thing. Uh, <laughs> but there's nothing necessarily racist. Asians are good with technology. This is not necessarily racist. It's a stereotype, but here's the thing. It is technically racist because it shows the superiority of one race over another. Right. So technically it could be said to be racist because you're saying Asians are better at something than... But isn't it a compliment to them? You know, yeah, I would Wouldn't think so. I would think so, but uh, stereotypes, even positive, are still considered in the umbrella of racism. And I think it would be rather on who you're saying it to, because some people may get offended by it, and other people see it as a compliment. Right, like, yeah. I, 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 feel, I feel like I'm out of loop because the PC people, you know, politically correct people, they take things way to one side. Yeah. And then there's these other people who just try to be offensive, and I'm trying to give more of a def dictionary definition without taking sides uh -huh. of right. what is racism. Right. Because I really feel like there's a lot of just confusion about this. And we can't even look to see what the Bible says until we actually know what racism is. Right. Um, we should have closed borders. This is not necessarily racist unless your idea is this. I hate Mexicans, so we should have closed borders because I hate Mexicans. Well, then it's racist. Yeah. You see what I mean? Right. Like. I am not taking sides on this about Trump's wall or about closed borders. I am leaving my opinion out. I'm just saying I don't see that this is necessarily racist. So there's a few things to look at. It's not so much what is said, but how it is said. Yeah. She's a Mexican. Or she's a Mexican. Do you see the tone there? The attitude that went with one, whereas it was absent from the other one? Yeah, is it is it yeah is it like a, a derogatory way or is it a fact? Uh -huh. Well, can you describe her? She was a Mexican woman, about five foot five, with uh -huh. black hair. Uh -huh. 
that's not racist. That's a description. <laughs> like right. you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. So there, there, there is definitely that. But with racism, it's so touchy, and you have to make sure that you um, meet the other person on their level of uh, yeah. how comfortable they are with themselves. Right. Because if you're comfortable with yourself, that's good, but they might not be so secure with themselves. Yeah. So you kind of have to like meet them on their level if you want to have an impact for Christ. Uh -huh. right. If you don't care about witnessing to the person and you just want to do your own thing, then I guess it doesn't matter anyway. So. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. You can't force people to not be racist. No. And see, a lot of times when, when you're witnessing to people who are very clearly racist, you want to address that issue of them being racist. But here's the thing. But Your job isn't to make them not racist, and you can't make them not racist. Uh -huh. That's the Holy Spirit who will do that. You give them time, okay? Uh, <laughs> um, and you also can't establish laws that govern people's hearts. You can only establish laws that govern people's actions, which is why it's so hard to say, for instance, um, a hate crime. How do you know if it's a hate crime or if it just so happened that they were attacking someone of the other of a different race? You can't know the, the, the condition of their heart unless they specifically said that they were beating them or whatever because of their race. Yeah. See what I mean? So what we have is we have people trying to give laws well, to govern it, just a second, to, to govern the issue of, of racism, but you really can't weed it out through laws. What were you going to say? One example, I think, um, wasn't necessarily a race, but the guy that shot up that uh, gay... Uh, club. Mm -hmm. He went there because they were gay. Mm -hmm. Like he specifically went there. To right. Shoot them. Because that would be a hate crime. That would be a hate crime. Right? <laughs> there it is. Yeah. That is exactly right. right. But let's say he was just going on the street and decided to start killing people. Yeah. And it just so happened that he killed a few homosexuals. Well, that wouldn't be really be a hate crime. He was more of just crazy killing people. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So there, there is that difference there um, that needs to be. Um, yeah. yeah, addressed. Uh -huh. <laughs> so uh, many Christians have a Jewish superior mindset. Basically, uh, is Israelites uh, have a are like they're not really like people. They're like super people, and no matter what they do, we need to back them on everything. And this is very very dominant in, in America. They automatically go to heaven as long as they're descended from Abraham physically. Uh -huh. um, nothing they do is ever wrong, uh, you know. And it's like, well, well that's kind of racism. Yeah. Because it's for a people group that's not, you know, like God's not going to forget the Israelite people, and they were the ones who first inherited the law, and so God will remember them before the end, and He right. He establishes a plan for them, and He will still save many of them right. as Revelation shows us. Right. You know, it's, it talks about the 144,000 sealed from the tw from each, from uh -huh. the 12 different tribes. Yeah. Absolutely, God will not right. forget them. However, that does not mean that they are super people, no. and it doesn't mean that all anything wrong that they do we can just excuse. No, so, I, you know, there, there has to be some, some balance here. Right. Okay, so. Um, uh, okay. So that's kind of the essentials of racism. But now let's look at a specific example. This is this is the Aryan example. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about the Aryan Brotherhood. Um, there's a lot of other Aryan groups besides that. Um, basically, it is a white supremacist groups that are uh, largely in prisons. Um, but then obviously the people get out of prison, so it's not just in prison. Um, there are different there are different groups. Um, now that that leads most people who are not familiar with prison to say, okay, what the heck is Aryan? What does that mean? Well, okay, <laughs> this gets a little bit complicated. Okay. <laughs> so Aryan is a word that means noble, but it can also be translated as pure. So then what happens is a group of Nazis really took it took advantage of this and started translating it as pure, saying that there's a pure bloodline <laughs> who are the Aryans okay. that um, – I'll get into this. Don't worry about it. We'll come back to this. But um, So basically there's this pure race that, that's superior. They're like superhumans to other races, uh -huh. but um, they got intermingled, and so um, – a lot of a lot of Hitler's thing was trying to get back to that Aryan race. Okay, yeah. now put put a pin in that. We'll come back to that. That's just yeah. to give you an introduction to the idea of that. Okay, so Aryan more more literally means noble uh -huh. um, in Sanskrit. Um, it's not necessarily racial, but more cultural. It is possible that a group of people came into the India area and conquered them, uh -huh. and 
Um, we don't know a whole lot about these people, but either way, whether they came in as invaders or whether they were there already, I, it's not really important. Um, we don't really know for sure either way. Um, these people were called Aryan or nobles. They were the nobles of India, um, which, once again, how did they get that rank of being a nobleman? Either they came in as conquerors or they were already there. Um, really hard to tell. But if you do look at Indian people today, there is definitely uh, – they do look different from the southern part of India to the northern part of India. The northern part tends to be a little bit, uh, a little bit more lighter skinned. So there is some um, idea of okay. two different maybe heritages there. Uh, really hard to know for sure. And once again, this is, people fight about this so much that I'm trying – not to pick a side on this. <laughs> Literally, this is a very heated topic. Wow. Um, um, so, but here's the thing. Uh, either way, these noblemen fought themselves too. So, okay. even if they were outside invaders, they fought themselves too. It's not like they, they were this perfect uh, group of oneness that just, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, and the Rig Veda is Hindu scriptures. Um, not all of them, just some of them. Uh, and it is used to validate the idea of Aryan, that there's a pure race, okay? okay. Um, because they translate the Aryan into pure instead of noble, uh -huh. okay? So then they'll use the, these Hindu scriptures to validate this claim of Aryanism, okay? We're not even down to the Germans yet. We're talking about ancient history, like 3000 BC, ancient, ancient oh, wow. history, okay? Long time ago. This is now like, you know, five, 6,000 years ago. And once again, we're real foggy on the details. People still argue about it. Right. Supposedly, there was this pure race that migrated throughout the entire world. But as they migrated, uh, they intermingled with the other peoples and got uh, lessened. What? And here's the thing. This pure race is like – they're like uh, smart people. They're, 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 um, uh, yeah. they're conquerors. Uh -huh. uh, they're intelligent. But these other people are, are lesser people. They're just kind of like filthy people. Right. You know, and so these people intermingled. But think of it like this: Homo sapiens uh -huh. and cavemen, yeah, yeah, getting together and intermingling. Oh, okay? okay. So because of this, the Aryans kind of got dumbed down, yeah. and they got you know uh, where they're not pure anymore. Right. Okay. So that's the idea there. Okay. <sighs> so then we get into the 1900s with with the Nazis. Uh -huh. And the, these German writers came up with this thing where Europeans had five subtype races. I know this is very complicated, guys. Okay. I, I know. Okay, I'm trying to break this down as yeah. simple as possible. <laughs> okay. Um, and for, there were of these five subtype races, one of these was the Nordic. Now the Nords were supposedly Aryan, and Germans were supposedly most directly related with the Nords. Okay. Uh, so does this all make sense? Okay, any questions so far? Okay, so these Germans thought that they needed to try to get back to those roots to try and, and get back to that pure race again. And so they had – you had to have uh, proof of uh, your heritage up so many generations to prove that you were from this Nordic descent. And um, this is where the Nazis got their kind of racial – ah, because Jews were not pure people. They were they – were they were gross, right. as were the Slavic people. Right. And they were also considered just gross people, and so they were not permitted to, you know, intermingle. They they were they were put into concentration camps. Jews were not the only people in concentration camps, just so you guys know. There were lots of other people groups too. These lesser beings, okay? Right. Now, because these people were not, the they, they were lesser beings, the rules of war didn't apply to them. So they could put them in concentration camps and treat them wrong because they weren't actually people. Huh. Okay. Okay. Are you kind of seeing how this yeah. goes? Okay, so now you have Hitler in control of the radios and everything. So where everything all day long they're hearing this and they get brainwashed. Right. And they start believing this nonsense tells. And, and at the time, Germany is still pissed off from World War I. Yeah. So this all cause, leads into World War II and their ethnic cleansing. Okay, so you kind of getting a picture here? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> this is a very complicated topic, you guys. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Like when I, I, I knew I wanted to talk about the Aryans, but I, I didn't know this was going to be so complicated. Um, so, okay, they're, they're trying to control all this. Yeah. But then um, – so then uh, after, 
after the after World War II, now we have white supremacists in prisons. Aryan Brotherhood, for instance, I believe was started in Folsom Prison, um, and it's a white supremacist group. Okay, the the Aryan the different Aryan groups they're white supremacist groups. Okay, um, and they revived the Nazi idea. They're called neo Nazis. Okay, so in all of this, these are the the white groups in prison that are trying to once again have this racial purity okay <sighs> so with that being said most people believe that actually the first humans were darker skinned but through the depigmentation they turned lighter as they moved to other places more than likely all of our ancestors no one and whatnot were darker skinned people just so you know um, more than likely that's what science shows us but you know once again it could potentially be wrong. It's right. not a for sure thing because we weren't there. So right. um, so now in the prisons in these Aryan groups, there's a religious aspect, much like a cult, uh -huh. okay? besides their whole racial thing going on, right. where they'll have religious aspects. Now, we, you, you say, now, what are you talking about here? I'm already confused with all this different racial nonsense. <laughs> Basically, they're trying to return to the religious state of their ancestors before Christianity. You know how Christianity swept across the the Roman Empire, yeah. and it took over the the pagan the pagan uh, uh, religions. Yeah. This is an attempt to go back to that before they were polluted with Christianity. Wow. Okay, now in this culture, in the Nordic culture, it would be Odinism, also called Asatru. Right. Okay, so the people who you meet who are white supremacists will probably have a combination of different religious beliefs and um, uh, racial beliefs that are going to just blow your mind away. And they're going to go on and on and on about how history has been rewritten because Germany lost. And then they're going to bring up, you know, Odinism and how Christianity stole from it and all kinds of stuff. This is what they're talking about. Right. Because they're trying to get to that pagan belief before uh, Christianity polluted their culture. Because uh -huh. they're trying to get back to the Aryan, uh -huh. the pure race, okay? Right. <sighs> but now we're going to look at this in the future. There is ample evidence to claim that all religions were monothe monotheistic at one time. In other words, one god, even Hinduism. Uh -huh. But that throughout the course of time, people expanded it to many gods. Uh -huh. There's ample evidence for that. We're going to look at that in future lessons, so I'm not going to go into that. But if that's true, then even Odinism, with its many different gods, would then have come from that same idea of a one uh -huh. god system. Uh -huh. And we know that one god is actually our god, right. but throughout the course of pollution, you know, that kind of stuff. Anyways, uh, okay, so now all ethnic groups have their own racist versions of the Aryans, okay? Uh -huh. Black people have their own uh, racial purity groups. Right. White people have their own. Hispanic people have their own. All They all do, okay? Right. It's not a white problem. It's an, We all have a racist oh, problem, right. okay? Now, oh, if you'll notice, the Bible doesn't really address racism because the heart of man is the problem, not right. so much slavery. Okay, so hold on to that idea, okay? In all this, sometimes they'll talk about a racial soul. Now, a racial soul, soul refers to emotional and religious traits in a person as well as their physical features, okay? Certain people were seen as less than people. I already mentioned that. So this idea of Nordic people would be a blonde-haired, blue-eyed person, excuse me, which I think was funny because Ben and I were talking about this, and Hitler had black hair. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know, whatever. Uh, anyways, so there's a few obvious problems with the Aryan theory. Hopefully you have already started to see them. The first one, there's no evidence that, so, that there ever was a super race. There's no scientific evidence to support this claim. Second, no evidence that if there was a super race, it would be German or Nordic. There's no evidence that says that it would be a white group. There's no evidence for that. Um... My phone is in here somewhere, y'all. <laughs> it sounds like it's over there. <laughs> in your jacket? Is it in your back here? It could be. Oh, it is. I see the light. <laughs> I saw the sign. <laughs> <laughs> you need to open up your eyes? <laughs> yeah, it did. And just push dismiss? Okay, cool. Um... Also, there, there's a third problem with the Aryan belief. Skin color does not define ethnic origins. It only defines nationality sometimes. 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 
Okay, but ultimately it doesn't really define nationality either. I've gone to Mexico and seen some dark people, and I've gone to Mexico and seen some light people. So it really doesn't define nationality either. Okay, so there's that. So there's those are three problems. It has another problem. If there were a super race, it is doubtful it could ever be seen again due to intermarriage in time. It's been too long, and people have intermarried too long, too much. You can't go back to that. Are, right, it, it, it's too intermingled at this point. So even if there was, hypothetically, <laughs> which there is no proof that there was, this is basically just pulling out history out of thin air, yeah, which doesn't exist. Talk. You, it's you, you can't go back to it. Okay. Um, so then there's the problem about white supremacists in America who are trying to keep out different people based on race. Okay. <laughs> Like, for instance, keep out the Mexicans. They're crumbing up our, our, our economy or whatever. I'm not taking a side. I don't care. Right. I don't care <laughs> at all. I've never considered myself an American. I've always considered myself a Christian. And so I do not have an opinion about this. Um, I do see a lot of people saying a lot of stupid things on Facebook, <laughs> if that makes right. sense. Um, but American doesn't consist of white people. American consists of people from diverse backgrounds. Yeah. And so there is that. And so if we're trying to get America back to a white people, it's like, well, okay, well, let's let's back up a little bit further. Native Americans were here first. Yeah. So technically we'd be trying to get back to brown people, right? Right. Or red if you want to get racist. Well, uh, <laughs> so, I mean, if we're really wanting to do that. But even then, the people who were first migrated here from, like, Europe and whatnot, not all of them looked or, the same. So uh, there's that. Um, and so I already mentioned that a lot of racism involves uh, – um, conspiracy theories. So very quickly, let me just kind of go through this. All people are made in the image of God. And so don't see anybody as less people because of their color of skin. People from every ethnicity have had accomplishments. Black people have done things. White people have done things. Everybody in every culture has accomplished something. Okay, uh -huh. Accomplishment doesn't depend on skin color. Accomplishment depends on your willpower. Uh -huh. People who have wanted to do something great, they did it. People who have sat around whining about this and that, they don't do great things. That goes for what whatever color of skin you have. If you, I've literally seen Christians who, my great-grandpa started a church back when he, well, great well, for him, but he's dead. No, right. well, what are, are you doing, doing for the kingdom? Right. <laughs> like, the, the time for sitting on your haunches and, and saying about your ancestors, that, that nonsense That's is just, gone. Yeah. Um, there is no scientific basis for some people being treated as less. Be they black or white, fetus or old. See, because the same argument is resurfacing. Do you know what they said with slaves? They're not really people. Do you know what Germany said with Jews? They're not really people. Do you know what people are saying now with with fetuses, abortions? They're not really people. Yeah. You know what people are saying about you see what I mean? They're not really people. That's it's a resounding theme. It you know, you wouldn't think you would have to lean on science to show, yes, they are people. All of these people are people and should be treated as people. Women? They're people. Men, they're people. You know, but for whatever reason, people just get real retarded about this. Um, so anyway, skin color does not establish personality. Even in closed-off environments, there are variations of character. We see this in Babylon, where there's all these different people, and then here comes Hammurabi. Same thing can be said about Sargon the Great. The same thing can be said about, you know, Abraham. Here he is amongst all these other people who are just like him, but they all didn't go and follow God into the promised land. He did. There are variations of, of character in every culture. Like, it just doesn't make sense. Um, skin color does not establish personality. There is that. This whole idea of racial soul is nonsense. That's like saying, Hispanic women, they're hot-blooded. Uh, Actually, anybody can be hot-blooded. Right. And we learn from our environment. So all it takes is for one person to be hot-blooded and the other people just kind of follow in suit because it's the norm. Uh -huh. You know? Um, so anyways, um, now we'll look at what does the Bible say. And I also want to say this. In the resurrection, there won't be races. When, when the new heavens and the new earth, there won't be races. So it makes absolutely no sense to argue so much about yeah. somebody's color of their skin. All that skin color shows is the, your skin pigmentation that is visible. Everything underneath is still the same. They have the same skeleton, the same everything. Uh, so, do what? We all bleed blood. <laughs> we all bleed blood. Right. <laughs> no, mine's kind of purple. <laughs> <laughs>
That's because you have too many machines hooked up to you. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3 says this, Furthermore, you shall not intermarry with them. You shall not give your daughters to their sons, nor shall you take their daughters for your sons. Now, there are a few things to look at this. He's not saying though these people are less of people. There are two things he's talking about. A, God had determined that the Canaanites would be punished. And so he didn't want the Israel to mix with them because he didn't want to bring punishment on Israel too. Right. Israel was supposed to be their, his people. Right. Second off, these people didn't serve God. And so he didn't want them to intermarry with them because he didn't want them to intermarry faith. The same is true of Christians. Christians have no business getting in relationship with non-Christians. I know Christians nowadays don't see this as that big of a deal, but it's a huge theme in Scripture. Yeah, they can save them if they Yeah, I can I can save them if I date them. It's like, are you retarded? Do you know how many successful missionary datings I've seen in my entire life? One. One. And here's the thing. It didn't end well. They converted, but they turned into a nasty Christian who caused a bunch of problems. But they were Christian. Jeez. See what I mean? And that's that's my entire life seeing people missionary date. Yeah. So, I mean, I know I'm only 26, but I, I've been around, man. I've seen a lot of things. So, okay, then we get to Acts chapter 10, um, verses 34 through 35. You don't have to turn there if you don't want to. It says this. Opening his mouth, Peter said, I most certainly understand now that God is not one to show partiality, but in every nation that the man who fears him and does what is right is welcome to him. God doesn't show partiality. See, Peter, this was news to Peter. He'd grown up, grown up thinking that his race was superior, thinking that God only wanted to save the Jews. And here he is realizing that God's saving the Greeks too. He's like, holy smokes. They, their mind was even more blown when God started saving barbarians. Yeah. The people who weren't civilized Romans. <laughs> this blew their mind. They were all like, whoa, whoa. Do what? Heathens. 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 Colossians chapter 3 verse 11 uh, says, A renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, and freeman, but Christ is all and in all. Christ saves all of us. Whoa. Whoa. Big, big break from break from the uh, common view there. Right. James chapter 2, verse 8 says this, If, however, you are fulfilling the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You are doing well. So who's your neighbor? Everybody. <laughs> Regardless of cultural norms, racism, heritage, or politics, Christians are united as one people, God's people. Right. We shouldn't be known as people who are shooting off our, our, our lip about all kinds of stupid, stupid arguments. Uh -huh. I mean, honestly. You should see some of the, some of the Christian friends that I have, I got one friend on Facebook who can't shut up about Trump. Like anything that Trump does, he just picks him apart. It's like I I'm not crazy about Trump, but I have other things to do than than yeah. rag on him all day. Right. I've got other friends who constantly talk about you know white people and, and how we're all bad. <laughs> and... The thing of it is, if those people would spend that time actually doing something good in the world, <laughs> they would make a huge impact. Yeah. You know, Martin Luther King Jr., like, he saw corruption, so what did he do? He did something about it, and he left a lasting legacy. Right. Uh, anyway, so let's a very brief look at at, uh, at slavery to help you understand this. When there um, – uh, a lot of times people think that slavery was the worst back in when America had slaves. Yeah. Today, there are more slaves in the world than there have ever been in all of human history. Uh -huh. Because there's an illegal slave trade that is huge. And there are other countries who actually condone it. India, for instance, there are legal slaves. Oh. Blows your mind, oh. right? Yeah. There are more slaves today than there have ever been. You know, you have all these people complaining about their ancestors being slaves. I get that. That was only two or three generations ago. That wasn't that long ago. Right. Really, I get it. Yeah. That's jacked up crap. Like, white people and got all kinds of great things from the labor of black people, and the black people were never compensated for all that hard work that they did. I get it. That's not fair. Right. However, we could be a little bit more creative about this and help other people who are still in slavery today get out of slavery. Right. Hey, here's something to blow your mind. Did you know that Native Americans owned slaves too? Really? Blows your mind, right? No way. Did you know that there were some black people in the South who owned slaves? Wow. Blows your mind. You see your countrymen in slave. Sorry, legal? what? Is it legal? No, I mean back in, in the Civil War day. Oh, oh. 
Yeah, that blows my mind. You see your countrymen in, chain, in, in, in chains, and so your idea is to own a slave yourself? How could you do that? Like, if I saw my own boy over here in slaves, I'd be like, man, he's got to go free. Um, anyways, but uh, by modern standards, a slave would cost $40,000. Um, an average of, I believe it's around 32%. An average of 32% of the South owned slaves. An average. Wow. Wow. So, and in yeah. some states it was up in the 40% and some it was down in the 20%. Arkansas, for instance, only had 20% of the population owned slaves. Wow. Wow. In total, the South owned an average of about 32%. Wow. 32% of the population owned wow, slaves. Sorry. More. Yeah, it's actually not a whole lot of people owned slaves. And here's the here's the thing that, that that makes me laugh is when they when they say all white people, huh. because here's the thing my ancestors came over in in early 1900s. Uh -huh. My German ancestors they weren't Nazis, they came over in the early 1900s before the Nazi Party came to power. Yeah. My ancestors didn't own slaves they weren't here to own slaves. My ancestors were a bunch of scumbags they they were they were people they were the outcasts of society. They they didn't own slaves. They were poor people. Maya. And I'm white, but I don't. I never but, had. It, right. My ancestors never did any of that stuff, and I certainly didn't. Right. My grandma's grandma came over from Sweden. Sweden. When she was like sixteen, yeah. I think, because her brother told her, "Oh, women don't have to work over here, and everything's great for you over here." Aww. She comes over here and has to work in a factory. Aww. Did she not Aww. see the the little cartoon with the mouse? <laughs> Everything's great in America. <laughs> Remember? Fifle. Fifle, yeah. Streets are like sitchy. Anyways, um, so to generalize, uh, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, no matter who you're who you're talking about, you know. Um, <clears throat> so the the thing with slavery is that people were viewed as property. That's that's the big thing that I want you to get from this. <coughs> People were viewed as property. You couldn't teach a slave. Why? Because they were property. You could will a slave in your estate. Why? Because they were property. That's jacked up crap, yo. Yeah, please. Whoever talks about America being a Christian country, no. that's nonsense, man. No. We weren't founded on Christianity, and we weren't we haven't grown on Christianity. It's just nonsense. Right. Today. We are more Christian than we've ever been, and that's including – I mean in worldview, right. in worldview, which is saying something because the majority of the population hates Christianity. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean you yeah. see how it definitely was not a Christian uh, um, – anyways. Um, and so the South actually thought that the economy was dependent on slaves. They thought that if they got rid of slaves that their entire yeah. economy would be destroyed. Um, and uh, much of history is filled with people owning slaves. This is this is a very sad state of, of history, but still. Which brings us to our question. If slavery is wrong, why does the Old Testament law allow for it? Any ideas? Why does the law ad, uh, allow for, for slaves? If it's wrong. Mm. Blew your mind, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> My thoughts are two things. Okay, one. Um, one, it was culture back then. Okay, but. but so you're saying. It was culture then. So you're saying yeah. that it's okay if it's if it's no, okay with the culture? No, I'm not. I'm just then why didn't the law talk about it? I don't know. And then two, <laughs> um, after so long, you couldn't keep a slave for their whole life. It was only like what. Seven. Unless they bound themselves, right. in which case they had to be pierced in the ear uh, with an awl, which sounds like it hurts a yeah. lot. <laughs> but that's still choosing that they want to. Oh yes, it. yes, absolutely, absolutely. And um, and then like if and then you could hire them up as a uh, servant after afterwards too if you wanted to, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, because you could hire whoever you wanted. Yeah. That, not saying that slavery is right, but it seemed like back in the day, like Bible times, slavery was more fair in a way. Not that it's not that it still wasn't right, but it seemed like it was more. Let me give you an example. In the law, when you had a slave who married another slave and had children, mm -hmm. if he got his freedom, his wife and kids had to stay. They weren't his. 
they owned to the they belonged to the master. So if he didn't want to leave his wife and kids, he had to go back into permanent service. To me, uh, I look at slavery in the Old Testament is because people were poor, mm -hmm. so they would rather work to somebody that had money, which they considered slaves. Mm -hmm. But to them, that was something to do to work to provide for the family. So that was a good thing back then, I would say. Diana is Actually, right yeah. on topic. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Slavery back then had a whole different idea than it does today. Slavery oh, yeah. was about is about racism now. Back then, it was about you don't have the money to pay, so you go into service for somebody. So now you can work off what you owe. Right. That's a good thing. Now, we are all slaves in a certain yeah, sense. Sure. I have to go to work. I don't want to go to work, I but have, I have to. <laughs> I have to go to work, and I have to serve customers that come in. And then you have to take part of that money and give it to somebody else. Yes. <laughs> See what I mean? So we're all slaves all... in a system. We just call it something else now. Right. Employment. Uh, employment. <laughs> we call it right. employment now. Uh, <laughs> but absolutely, absolutely, it had a whole different idea back then. Yeah. But then there's a few other ideas that I want to want to talk about very, very quickly. The Old Testament does not try to establish perfection uh, or a utopia. Right. The Old Testament just shows a problem. That's all the Old Testament does. Uh -huh. The Old Testament never offered a solution. It just... In fact, that was the entire argument of the New Testament. The Old Testament didn't show us a way out. Now Jesus has shown us the way out of the law. Right. He isn't saying you should have slaves, but slaves were a part of the culture, and so God used that part of the culture. Right. It also doesn't address mar marijuana. It doesn't address polygamy, uh, having multiple wives. The law never says that's wrong. No. Um, it never address, addresses women's rights. It never addresses uh, racial equality. Uh, it never does any of those things. It allows for things that God doesn't like. You know, in the law, you could rape somebody, and the only thing that came of it is you had to marry them or pay their father. God is okay with rape? No, of course he hates rape. No. Then why does the law allow for it? See what I mean? Um, were you going to say Just something? because it's not a law doesn't mean it's not wrong. Or just because there's no law doesn't make it right. Right, okay. Oh, man, I was confused. Yeah, I see what yeah, you're saying yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it also allows for divorce, even though God says he hates divorce. In fact, this is something that blew the minds of people in Jesus' day. They're like, is it right to divorce? And Jesus is like, what What God unites, don't let any per anybody uh, separate. And so then he, and then they're like, wait, 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 hold on. But didn't the law say we could get divorced? And he says, well, yeah, but because of your hardness of heart, it wasn't something that God wanted. See, the law allows for a lot of things that God doesn't like and that God doesn't want us to do. But its purpose isn't to show us perfection. Or its purpose is to show us what is right and wrong and that we can't live up to a standard. Right. Right? Because if the law is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, you wouldn't oh. slave your neighbor, would you? Oh. If you loved your neighbor, you wouldn't look down on him because of his skin color, would you? Yeah. If you loved your neighbor, you would allow women to be paid the same as men for the right. same job. Right? Right. If you really loved your neighbor, see what I mean? All these problems would be resolved by loving your neighbor. Uh -huh. But obviously people, people don't live like that. So um, it used the culture of the time to show people their need for a savior. That's the purpose of the law. It's not concerned with, with, with uh, having, having perfection. And the last point for this lesson, we are closing with this. Slavery is not the root of the problem. The heart is the root of the problem. Uh -huh. The heart is the root of the problem. See, you can outlaw slavery all you want, but you can't outlaw hate. You have white people who genuinely hate black people for no other reason than their skin color. And if you talk to a lot of Aryan people, Aryan Brotherhood and that kind of, that whatnot, they will say this, racism is a part, of, uh, is a part but it's not the main factor. Uh, I guess we have different understandings of racism. Yeah. You know? Um, so slavery is not the root of the problem. The heart is. The heart is. Okay. I mean, that's shown by the way that slavery has been outlawed technically in America, yet there is still a, an underground slave problem yeah. in America. Huh? That's crazy nonsense that, that a truck that you could be driving past could potentially have slaves in the back. Right. And you wouldn't even know. Like, whoa, did that blow your mind or what? Yeah. You know, we don't think about it because this is the land of the free, but, you know. Uh.
There's a lot of people in slave, slavery. So, any questions about tonight? I know racism is a very heated topic. Uh, I know it took me a long time to get through all that. <laughs> the, any? the slaves are, is, is it mainly like um, illegal immigrants that they brought them over to America saying that, you know, they'll help them? There, there are some of them, them yes, but the young girls, young girls runaways, and people who've been um, abducted. Stuff. A lot of the people like the who have, sex trade included in yes, slavery, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Um, like a lot of the people that you'll see on like milk cartons and whatnot, yeah. they will have been abducted and, and sold into the slave uh, yeah. labor. And here's the thing: it's international. Uh, uh, somebody could be abducted from America, but be sold in you know Guatemala. Right. You, you see what I mean? Like it, it's international. Yeah. Some of your white friends here who who might get abducted could potentially be in India working as a slave. Yeah. You just you see it's, it's it's everywhere. So does that answer that question? Yeah, it does. It does. Um, it happens to a lot of means. Um, a lot of times people will put signs on the side of the street that say, hey, uh, quick, easy money. And so kids call because they, you wow. know, they're young and stupid. Uh -huh. you know, and they go in there and it's not a job. They get abducted. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's illegal people that nobody will miss. Sometimes it's people who are homeless that, once again, nobody will miss. Uh -huh. um, you know, it's people who are, who are out of the public eye that you can grab. Then there's opportunity. Well, there you go. So, As far as how much these slaves cost, it varies. Um, sometimes they're just sold to corrupt people who have a lot of money. Well, and they'll use them for internet stuff, too. Yeah. Right. And then, yeah, and then sometimes the person who owns a slave will, uh, use them repeatedly. Um, like, for instance, with the slave, with the sex uh, stuff, where you will sell them like a prostitute, but you will own the person. So, very sad stuff. Yeah. But it is a fact of our world. Um, so any other questions? I just kind of have a comment. Go ahead. It, this actually really has kind of cleared up for me that World War II and everything that happened with the Nazis, that it was more of a race problem, not a religion problem. Yeah, because <laughs> once again, you can make the Bible and everything else say whatever you want it to. You can, you can twist anything. Yeah. For instance, how they take the Rig Veda, the, the Hindu scriptures, and validate their neo-Nazi belief, and it's like, wait, what? Those scriptures are from thousands of years ago. Yeah. What? <laughs> but anyways, any other questions or comments? There was an episode of MASH I was watching a while well back where... Uh, from that giant collection that we got bent, or that you guys got bent? Uh -huh. uh, well, I was watching it at HBO. Oh. But um, uh -huh. there was this uh, young girl, they called them Mooses. And basically, the GIs would buy them from the family, and they would be their their slave, you know, and do everything for them. Well, this this guy came into the hospital, and he was really just treating the girl like crap, right? And so one of the guys is like, you know, he he's like, we we got to do something about this, and uh, so he he won her in a poker game, and then. Uh, like, she wanted to stay with him, and he's like, no, no, you're free now, you can go, you know. But her mindset was that, like, what Diana was talking yeah. about. Like, my family's poor. Yeah. yeah. You know, you bought me, so. Oh, now. now I'm covered, I've gotten yeah. food and stuff. Yeah. 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 Right. yeah. And then her little brother came in, and he was, like, the family business guy and stuff, and he's, like, 12. Oh, and yeah. he comes in, and he's like, Man, you're stupid. You had a good moose here. 